Viacom and CBS chairman Sumner Redstone is now being ordered by a judge to undergo a mental health exam. This comes after a series of lawsuits were filed questioning the 92-year-old's mental competence. But what about the shareholders? Take a look at the two companies, both CBS and Viacom, which of course were split, ending 2015 way down, 16 and 36 percent respectively. Okay? Fox Business senior correspondent Charlie Gasparino and New York City super lawyer at Arkin Solbach and Lisa Solbach. And great to have you here, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. But what is the implication and the ramification of forcing a company founder like Sumner Redstone in the media world, giants of giants, to go see a psychiatrist? Oh, it's, it's almost worse than that. Um, it's, it's not a psychiatrist. They're going to be testing his mental competency. Uh, so the questions will be directed to whether or not he has the thought processes that are necessary to run a company of this nature. Um, you're a good lawyer. I know, we we'll just point out, Lisa and I know each other, and I, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of her. Um, okay, so I'm a shareholder. Um, I go to you and say, I want to sue the hell out of these guys. The stock is in the is in the tank. Mm -hmm. Philippe Dumont, the head of Viacom, gets paid I don't know twenty million dollars. We have his chart up there. We can show what his 2014 compensation is. Big bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, Sumner Redstone is not a non-executive chairman. He's the executive chairman. Do they have a class action lawsuit here that a guy possibly mentally incompetent is shelling out all the? Look at the compensation there. Right. On a declining stock. Right. That seems to me, if Mel Weiss was still around, remember Mel? <laughs> I certainly do. He was the king of class action. That's right. He would be suing these guys tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah. As... I mean, it, listen, it's a significant sum of money. Um, it's consequential to the company. And the question is, what is he doing? What's the value added for those types of sums? Now, will there be a lawsuit, you think? A well, there, um, well there, there tends to be after a derivative suit like this. Um, you'll see a lot of other lawsuits sort of come out of the woodwork with various other people. And do you think they have cases? Um, at least on the facts as they, as they plead them, it appears so. Well, appears look, so. well, we've got a market sell-off, and that would take down Viacom as well. We're down 202 points, Lisa. Right. And, and these things matter right. to companies, stocks, boards. Mm -hmm. They don't want to look at their stock that's been hammered by this market and then be questioned as to whether the CEO is getting paid too much. This could hurt many CEOs, correct? That's right. That's right. And what's interesting about this suit is that you have a separate litigation where the discovery is happening quickly. Mm -hmm. Typically in these types of cases, everybody sort of sits around and looks at the complaint and nothing really moves forward. It will move forward here. How about here. the SEC? Could they go after the board on that for allowing? I mean, some of the Redstone is signing the, the, the checks for these guys. Right. Not signing checks, but improving their, their compensation. Could the SEC go after, go after the board saying, you're allowing an executive chairman, not a non-executive chairman, who may not be fit for the job? Well, I think the SEC is going to be more interested in what statements are being made to shareholders in things okay. like the proxy statement. Okay. And there is a proxy statement allegation in the complaint. Um, it's not that, it's, it's somewhat limited in scope. So, so if they say that some of the Redstone's really with it and he's not, they got a problem. Right, that's right. Okay, one, one other, just real quickly. She's, she's represented Michael Kramer, mm -hmm. the, the, the restructuring guy who's uh, suing uh, Joe Perella, mm -hmm. right? That I saw, I saw a nice story in the paper today. Joe <laughs> Perella, the big investment banker. Let me ask you this. Who picks up your sizable tab on something like that? Because um, I know you guys are raking in the hours. <laughs> in our particular litigation, we're, we're fortunate in that when PWP sued Michael Kramer and his team, they ended up triggering an indemnification clause, mm -hmm. which actually requires that they pay our fees okay. to some extent. So Joe is paying your, 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 your bill? To a certain extent, yes. Joe Perella. <laughs> All right. Well, well, nobody's getting paid if, if the market keeps losing. It's great to see you. Thank you for having Lisa, me. Lisa, thank you very much.